Hey guys, today we're gonna discuss why the, your key copy doesn't work or why does the key that you just went and got copied not work? Uh, of course, there could be many reasons why. It could be just a straight error or it can be wrong key itself or, or whatever. There can be many different reasons, but in particular, we're talking about um, the machine itself not cutting correctly and that's what's causing your key not to work. So the reason why you go sometimes, a lot of people go to very, most common places that people go to get keys cut besides a locksmith shop um, would be like a Lowe's, a Home Depot, an Ace Hardware, you know, places like that. Old school hardware stores, little small mom and pop hardware stores sometimes have some key cutting machines, things like that. Now, uh, I've got Brian here with me today. We're gonna, we're gonna show you how to calibrate these machines, but all those machines need to be calibrated. They all move and they're all adjustable and, and can be adjusted and, and fixed to cut correctly, right? So if the problem is, is when they put those machines in those stores is they're set to cut and sometimes they come out of calibration, you know, just like these machines do. And when they come out of calibration, it may be now cutting too deep or too shallow or to the left or to the right or whatever it may be. But just like anything else, eventually they come out of calibration or they, they move a little bit and they need to be tweaked and readjusted. So the reason why you go to those stores and it's and you're constantly having problems, which we constantly have people come over here saying, hey man, every time I go there, the keys never work, right? Well, the best understanding that I can get to why that is, besides the fact that they're not locksmiths and they don't do this as we do and they don't have the eye for it, because that is also part of it, is because the machines come out of calibration. So like here, every week and a half, two weeks or so, maybe even less than that sometimes, we're recalibrating these machines because they cut a bunch of keys, it moves, it adjusts, and sometimes you even need to calibrate it to compensate for something. Um, and we actually sometimes move it on purpose, right? But those big box stores, I mean, they don't have someone on site that's an expert on those machines that can sit there and just calibrate them on spot. So they may, and I don't know what it is, they may have someone who comes out every three months, every six months, every year, but Unfortunately, until it gets calibrated again, it's cutting everything off. So usually I'll have people come over and they'll be like, hey, I got this key, cut it low. There's no one can get this thing cut working right. Well, it may just be because the machine wasn't calibrated right, or it may just be the key's really worn. And now we have to make some adjustments on the machine to compensate for the wear or, or whatever it may be. But that's why it's important to go to a locksmith to get it done too, is they can make those adjustments. And you go to Home Depot or Lowe's or anything like that, they're looking at a picture, they're going, oh, this key doesn't look like this key, must not work. And sometimes it's just the fact that the heads just a do not duplicate head, but it's still the same key. But because they're not locksmiths, they don't realize it's the same key when you look down the barrel of it. So anyway, there's a bunch of reasons, there are a couple of reasons off the top of my head that I can think of why those keys don't work. But a lot of time it has to just simply do with key calibrating on the machines and error on the person doing it. So. Right here, we got a Silica, was it 040? Yeah, 044 speed duplicator. Uh, Brian's got what he needs here, basically is just an Allen wrench and two blanks that are alike to calibrate this machine. Uh, also one of our sponsors at UHS Hardware. So we have it on our nice little pin mat here, uh, the, the parts that we're gonna need. Uh, Brian is gonna go ahead and explain to you how to, how to do the uh, calibration on this and kind of what the moving parts are. It's very simple, not a lot to it, but go ahead, Brian. Alrighty. So to start it all off, you want to put two of the exact same key blanks, preferred same brand as well. That way you know that the millings are correct between the two. And you just want to clamp them onto both jaws. Um, if you want, you can shoulder gauge it just to make sure that your shoulder gauge is calibrated correctly. But you're going to just go ahead and you're a little kick stop here is actually going to stop it before you even hit the blade most of the time. If this isn't all the way back, that's what that's there for to keep this side from getting into the blade. But we go ahead and line it up and already right away, we can tell that this thing is not calibrated correctly because my blade over here on this side is already jammed up on the key. And what he has is just explain it here. He has two blanks. So what he's doing is saying, if, if this is touching here and it, it's not cutting, then this should not be touching the blade already. It should not be touching the blade until there's a divot in that key. So that's what it is. And that stop is to keep the blade from running into the jaw. So we're going too deep past the key into the jaw. There we go. There. And then, um, so at this point, what we want to do is go over here to our 
tip stop. That's what th this is called. Mm -hmm. And we want to loosen the uh, Allen screw that is keeping that locked in place. And then at this point, we're going to go ahead and line it up. And for this particular machine, uh, the more you twist it to the left, the closer I believe it gets. Yeah, it pulls back the tip stop. And then if we rotate it to the right, it's gonna push it away from the machine and giving us that gap that we want until this is now free. Um, I don't wanna tighten it down just yet because what you want it to do is kind of slightly graze the key because that's telling you that this tip stop and this is right at the tip of the, the key blade. So, right, because if there's no cut, then obviously the blade doesn't need to be cutting the key. So that's what he's trying to do is get it to where it's just grazing the key so that it's equal on both sides so that you can make a perfect copy of this on this side. But the reason why he's using a blank is because it needs to be equal on both sides, the distance, so he can lock it into place. Which we got it to where it's barely making the graze on there. So we want to go ahead and lock it down. And then at this point, if you do have a lock cylinder with already a cut key to it, you would just go ahead and make your duplicate, test it in that lock cylinder to make sure that everything is all perfect and ready to go. So if you turn it on with the two blanks right now, yeah. see what it makes. So we'll just gauge it like we are cutting a key. And now we should only hear a slight tick on it. That's about perfect, yeah. I mean, it literally just took a, a paper thin layer, off, not even a paper thin layer off that key. Is it even noticeable? Not really. Yeah, no, barely, like barely, barely. So if you notice the keys coming at it at an angle, right? And the blade spinning at an angle. So technically when it starts to cut, it's barely gonna cut on this side of the key. The, this is the blade of the key. It's barely gonna cut on this little side. Now, if it gets real close, then it'll cut a line all the way across it. But it's always going to slightly touch at the closest point before it touches across the whole blank. And that's what he was trying to do, but you can't even see it. But if you look at it, it just puts a tiny nick. That's how you know it's calibrated right. It'll put a nick on one edge of the blade, not not all the way across the blade too, right? So I see how quick that he did that. That was super quick. But now if he takes it, why don't you grab an SC1 just to show him that it works no matter what. Because now he basically gauged it. So it shouldn't matter what key blank he puts in because now it's the exact distance. As long as they're both the same on each side, it's not gonna cut too deep. Now it's very that simple, but the problem is they can't have someone on, on site to do these at these kind of places all the time. And on top of it, the machines they have are a little bit more complicated than this because they are, they're much more complicated in the fact that they are probably harder to adjust and things like that because it's made to simplify it simplify it so much for the technician that's doing the work because they're not locksmiths that it makes it more complicated probably to calibrate the machine like here it's literally the only thing we really have to worry about is how close it is that's it i mean other than that there's no other really adjustments that are, are needed to make once you have the key lined up in the exact spot this is just making an exact duplicate of that i mean as long as it is exactly the same distance apart on each side Level, we're good. So, perfect. He's going to cut a key. Is that a SC4? Yeah. Okay. So, just grab the random lock cylinder with a key in it. That way, we can make sure that the duplicate will work. And shoulder gauge it. And then we'll go ahead and cut it. going to test the duplicate key in the cylinder. Perfect. Now, if it was like rubbing real hard, like it was hard to turn, well, that means those pins that are falling in those divots of the key are too high and it's rubbing against the top, which means, oh, I need to make this thing cut deeper, right? Or if I put it in there and it's kind of snagging and then turning, well, then there's the pins a little bit below the line. So now there's a divot that the top driver pin's falling in and it's snagging on it. So if it's snagging, you know, ah, I cut too deep. If it's 
rubbing uh, cut too shallow. So that's kind of the feels that, and those are feels that we develop over time in our hand, not that it takes some great feeling, but but sometimes it does, depending if it's barely off. So yeah, that, the reason why those keys don't work half the time, but you get cut in your Home Depot and Lowe's and, and Ace is literally just because the machine either, usually I would, I would guess, uh, educated guess that the machines just came uncalibrated and that's the problem. But there is also a lot of error that could go on. Like I said, these, these are not locksmiths, that, you know, so they're just like, okay, well, last time I did this, I used this. And they're just matching a picture to things. So it's very simplified from over there. So I'm not saying don't get your keys cut there or anything. If you're in a bind and you get some keys cut, then I'm sure they work at least sometimes, otherwise they wouldn't be doing it. But we do have a ton of customers coming here all the time saying, hey man, I'm just tired of going over there. Half the time they don't work. Um, so yeah, simple as that. You literally have one adjustment it's literally how close it's going besides the tips out the, the stopper down here he's talking about that's more just to protect your investment because if you look in here real quick if i take the blank one and say i rolled over the edge of the key blank and it comes over that last little bit and then it goes and it hits the, the jaw it would start grinding right into the the jaw but because that stopper is there the blade is still not hitting the jaw so that's what that bottom stopper is for I and mean, you can adjust that just loosen that nut and get it fine-tuned if you want but yeah, it's just simple adjustment, lock it in. We're gonna do another video uh, coming up soon. It'll probably be a picking the brain episode on how to calibrate the HPC machine. That's a little bit more in depth, a little bit more technical. Um, I've tried it a couple of times. I can't stand doing it, so I have Brian do it all the time. Um, but we'll have a video on that and that'll show you how to calibrate those HPC machines. And if you're in the trade, you're constantly you might have to send those out to HPC to get repaired and things. Well, if you have a calibration kit, you should be able to self calibrate it without having to send it out all the time. So um, we'll do one of those videos coming up pretty soon. But thanks for tuning in. We appreciate the support as always. Uh, don't forget to follow us on, uh, on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, all the social media platforms. And don't forget, we have uh, two other uh, YouTube channels, Udropreneur and um, Guardian Approved. And we appreciate the support as always. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon for notifications and thanks for tuning in.